the truth, the truth that Jesus lives. The angels which were made manifest represents God's divine assistance in helping us to see this truth that Jesus lives. This isn't just speaking of events. It's speaking of reality. The reality that when we come to see that Jesus lives, a great stone has been rolled away from the eyes of our hearts and our minds, and we see the tomb as being empty. We know that he lives, that he is not among the dead, that his words regarding his death and resurrection resound in our hearts and our minds as truth. And there's nothing the world can do about it. They cannot stop Jesus from being alive. They cannot keep him among the dead. That tells us there's nothing in all the efforts of the world in which we live. All efforts to marginalize. All efforts to defeat. All efforts to discredit. All efforts to rewrite history and write Jesus out of the stream of human history will fail because the grave is empty. He lives. The world system cannot change the truth. Jesus lives. Here today, now, always, and eternally. And when we come to see this truth, the great stone that blocks our view of seeing the truth have been rolled away through the power of Almighty God. But we cannot do it on our own. This is not something that we can reason out. This isn't something that we can come to see simply through analyzing facts. It comes to us through the power of God, the Holy Spirit speaking to our hearts. Remember, as the lady said in Mark 16, verse 3, who will roll away the stone from the door? That tells us that we cannot of our own selves see this truth. We cannot roll the stone away from our eyes of our heart and our minds. The great stone that blocks our view of this truth must be rolled away through the intervention of Almighty God, through the work of the Holy Spirit to see that Jesus is not among the dead. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, tells us that the God of this world has blinded the minds and the hearts and the eyes of those in this world. The unbelieving. In their hearts and in their minds, there's still a great stone rolled over the eyes. They cannot see the truth. They see Jesus among the dead. But when the stones are rolled away from our hearts and our minds, we see the truth. He lives. That he has conquered even death. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 10 tells us that these truths are revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Jesus told the early church, his first disciples, even before his death, that it would... It would require the Holy Spirit's leading in their life and working in their hearts and their minds. He also told them that the Holy Spirit will always speak to them about Jesus. Not issues or events or personalities or politics, but Jesus. First in John 14, verse 26, it says, But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit... Whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have said. Remember how the angels reminded the women of the words of God, the words of Jesus regarding his resurrection? The Holy Spirit will always point us to Jesus and remind us of him and those things that he has spoken. What occurred there in the garden tomb only demonstrates what is and has always eternally been true. That even before the resurrection became a moment in the flow of human history. In John 11 verse 25, speaking to Martha, there before the grave of Lazarus, Jesus said, I am the resurrection, the life. 
He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet he will still live. You see, the resurrection of Jesus is not an event. It is who Jesus is. The resurrection is who he is. It isn't something that he does or did. It is who he is. His coming forth from the grave only demonstrates that truth. I am the resurrection. The bodily resurrection of Jesus when his glorified, resurrected humanity came forth out of the tomb only shows us what is already true. He has always been and eternally will always be the resurrection. He said this even before his own death and resurrection became a reality in the flow of human history. It tells us who Jesus is. It tells us that the grave cannot keep him. It has no power over our Lord and our Savior. When the great stone is rolled away from the eyes of our hearts and our minds, we see this truth. Paul tells us, as he did early Christians, what the resurrection of Jesus truly accomplished. In Romans chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, Paul writing to that church 2,000 years ago, but again to us today, and Christians throughout the ages, speaking of the resurrection of Jesus. Paul writes, Paul, a servant of Christ, called to be an apostle, separated for the gospel, which he has promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. And he is declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. That is that Jesus isn't the Son of God because he was resurrected, but he is resurrected because he is the Son of God. You see, Jesus didn't become the Son of God he is eternally the Son of God, and the resurrection verifies His divine identity. The resurrection also demonstrates the power of the cross, because without the resurrection, the cross of Jesus is meaningless. The resurrection demonstrates that Jesus has accomplished our salvation, yours and mine, and any who will but freely receive it. The resurrection shows us what is and has been eternally true. The great stone is removed from before our eyes and we can see the grave, that tomb, as empty. We come to see who Jesus is, that he is fully God, yet full humanity. He is the living one, the one who is risen from the grave, and he is not found among the dead. We each now come to that garden tomb, and we find that it is empty because the stone has been rolled away from our hearts and our minds. We see the truth that Jesus lives. The early church, the early church would gather and they would share in the commemoration of the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. But they understood that his death had no meaning apart from the resurrection. And they would commemorate the death of Jesus through the Lord's Supper. What is traditionally and what has throughout history been called the Last Supper is in truth not the Last Supper of the Old Covenant, but the First Supper of the New Covenant. That is when he changes the symbols it moves from being the Passover to the Lord's Supper. Today we will be sharing in that communion, that recognition that our Lord and our Savior has died, but his death has meaning because of the resurrection. The sacraments that we will take here in the communion have no meaning if Jesus has not come forth from the grave.